It's really important that you get a copy of your PGTA report. And from there, you'll have so much more information about what your embryos actually are. And then you can potentially meet with a genetic counselor and just get the information that you need before you're making these important decisions about discarding your embryos. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. I'm so delighted to have Megan Doyle, genetic counselor on today's show to talk about the truth about abnormal embryos. Thank you, Megan, for joining us today. Thank you for having me again, Amy. Of course. I want to share with you guys a little bit more about Megan. She's a genetic counselor specializing in infertility, pre-implantation genetic testing, and preconception genetic counseling. She now can talk to you guys through dnaid.com, depending on where you live. It's a platform for people to get her expert advice about their embryos before you discard. After seeing patients who came from other clinics where access to a genetic counselor was not available, she saw the negative impact this had on their care. She has since joined Instagram to help provide education on fertility genetics to help bridge this gap. She's passionate about genetics and works together with patients so they can feel empowered to make decisions about their fertility treatments that are best for them. Thank you, Megan, for honoring patients' priorities and for educating people around the world about their embryos. Welcome. And can you tell us about DNA? DNA is founded, just like you said, where I was just so moved when I heard how much I could help people who didn't have access to genetic counseling and I really wanted to make myself available for people when they really needed it. And so I, I founded DNA so that it would allow me to provide genetic counseling internationally to people who had questions about anything fertility genetics related or anything about growing their family. And that's really, really rewarding for me and I think has helped a lot of people on their fertility journeys as well. Awesome. And I'm so glad that you're back on today's show because we have so much to talk about and we can't talk about it enough before you discard what you should know and what you should do. And so many people have no informed consent about that because they're just told your embryos are abnormal. Click, they get no official report. So let's just start off with the basics real quick here. When we say embryos are genetically tested, what does that even mean? So really what that means is that we've taken a sample from the outer layer of the embryo, a few cells, and sent that sample to a genetic testing lab. And there's actually a few different types of genetic test testing that can be done on that sample. Usually though, when we say an embryo has had genetic testing, we're referring to a test called PGTA. And so when we say an embryo has been genetically tested, usually that's what we're referring to. And then there's also the SR and the M, just the alphabet soup about other things that you can do. But even if you're doing SR and M, you're still getting the A, correct? With SR, if there's a known genetic translocation or something in an individual, you're absolutely still getting PGTA. With PGTM, where we're looking for a genetic disease that there's the embryos are at risk for, you may not necessarily be getting PGTA unless you choose to have that done. So it's important that you get that added on in looking for the disease at the same time. Absolutely. So my patients, it's automatically added on. Very good point. Make sure you're getting the A and the M. Perfect. I feel like there should be like a little song. And isn't it funny that A, S, R, and M, all the different letters match up to American Society for Reproductive Medicine? Coincidence? It's amazing. You are so <laughs> clever. <laughs> so now let's get into abnormal embryos. And when you see a report after you've done PGTA, what information is there or should be there? And sh what should people ask for if it isn't there? So there should be a lot of information on your PGTA report. Usually there's some sort of interpretation. It may say something like abnormal, but really what we're looking for is something more specific. So the word aneuploid, mosaic, those are very key. Euploid meaning normal. And then really specific details about the chromosome abnormalities that are detected in those embryos so that we can know exactly what has been detected that's abnormal and what that means for the accuracy of the testing and the viability of that embryo in general. The report will often mention how the lab does their reporting, different thresholds they use to define those different categories as well. And how do you even know if something like mosaicism was even screened for in your embryos? 
So it should be something that is written on the report in the fine print list exactly what they're looking for and what types of things can be reported. But it can be really challenging if you're not familiar with the terminology to look at that fine print and know exactly what you're looking at. So that's where a genetic counselor can really come in handy, speaking with a laboratory genetic counselor. If you're not sure, make sure that you're getting a copy of your report and speaking to a professional who can give you that clarity. I agree. And so I ask my patients to do the same. And whenever I'm in a situation where they have abnormal embryos that are listed as abnormal on the report, and I think they could actually turn into a viable embryo, I also ask them to talk to someone like you, someone who's not affiliated with me or the genetic testing company to find out the truth before they discard their abnormal embryos. I want to get into a little bit more about what I mean. But first, can you actually discard a perfectly normal embryo that's been called abnormal? Unfortunately, it's possible. There are limitations with PGTA in terms of its accuracy and even our understanding of PGTA and the different types of results. So it has happened where people have discarded embryos before, and then later they learn that they could have been completely normal or could have led to healthy babies. And what kind of abnormalities could turn into a normal embryo when someone's looking at their report and wondering, I wonder if this applies to me? Technically, PGTA is greater than 97% accurate, but no type of embryo test is 100% accurate. And so technically, any embryo result can develop into a healthy baby if the test had some sort of inaccuracy. But there are certain things on the report that can sway us or make us think that embryo is more likely to become a healthy baby, kind of a different gradients on a scale of embryos that might be more likely to become a healthy baby than others. Mosaic embryos, for example, we know those embryos can become healthy babies. And then there's different types of aneuploid embryos as well. Certain aneuploid embryos may, in fact, be mosaic. And those ones are more likely to, if they are mosaic, develop into healthy babies as well. Wait, so now I'm confused. I'm not really confused, but <laughs> I'm going to pretend like I'm confused for a minute. So there could be embryos that are called abnormal, not mosaic on the report, but they could be really mosaic. And then you could potentially think they're abnormal and discard them. And no one told you that they could actually be mosaic. Tell me more. So this is something that is new and new in the literature, really coming out very recently, but there's a type of abnormality called a segmental aneuploid, where only part of the chromosome is abnormal rather than the whole chromosome. And just because of the biological mechanisms for how those chromosome abnormalities occur and how we understand them biologically, they do have a higher chance of being mosaic even if the biopsy and the cells that we tested showed abnormality throughout the whole sample. Just knowing that it's a segmental abnormality could make that embryo a mosaic embryo. And so from what the laboratory can tell, it looks aneuploid and it's a segment of a chromosome, but it's possible that in other areas of the embryo that weren't tested, there could be normal cells and the ability for the embryo to correct and become a healthy baby. So when you look at the report, if it says aneuploid, how do you know if it's also a segmental abnormality or not? Usually you would see things that really depends on the genetic testing laboratory, but you might see things like DUP, D-U-P, you might see DEL, D-E-L, and you might see the letters P and Q, which represent arms of the chromosomes. And after P and Q, sometimes you see even more letters and numbers, so like 22, 0.11, there's lots of much longer results for segmentals, whereas for whole chromosomes, they're more straightforward. You might just see plus one, minus 10. They're more limited in what the information that they're giving because the entire chromosome was impacted. Are normal embryos really genetically normal? So usually, yes. But again, within that 1% to 2% error rate for PGT, there is always a chance that they do have some sort of abnormality either because the embryo is mosaic and we tested normal cells and didn't get any abnormal ones, or because of limitations in that genetic testing laboratory and what they're able to detect. So usually a embryo that comes back with a euploid result is euploid, but it does depend a little bit on the genetic testing lab and some of their reporting criteria. Exactly. And what I also tell my patients is we're just looking at chromosomes. We're not looking at all the genes that will tell us if an embryo will turn into a child that has autism. 
or something like a birth defect or another abnormality that has nothing to do with the chromosome. So it's so important for people to realize what genetic testing really means. We're saying that the embryo based on the technology has normal chromosomes, but there are limitations. I call it the murkiest crystal ball, but it's the best <laughs> one we have, right? Absolutely. Okay, so what can a patient do to best advocate for themselves? Let's say they don't have a doctor like me, but they obviously could have someone like you teach us what they can do. So the first thing I would say is get a copy of your PGTA report. Uh, like you said, it is really, really common for a patient to just get a phone call or embryos are abnormal and that's the end of the call. We assume worst case scenario, we assume aneuploid, even in scientific papers, often the word abnormal is used when it really means mosaic or segmental aneuploid, or sometimes even no result where the test really didn't even give us any information. Honestly, abnormal usually just means non-euploid. And so it's really important that you get a copy of your PGTA report. And from there, you'll have so much more information about what your embryos actually are. And then you can potentially meet with a genetic counselor, again, either at the laboratory, if that's all that's available to you, or someone like myself who is not affiliated with that, and just get the information that you need before you're making these important decisions about discarding your embryos. Absolutely. And if you're listening to this and you think that you've already discarded your embryos, you may not have. Sometimes the lab has not done the discard yet, even if you did your IVF cycle two years ago. So call them and ask, and it is not too late. If, however, your embryos are already discarded, you have to wonder, is this emotionally going to impact you negatively to find out that potentially you discarded a low mosaic embryo? I don't necessarily want people asking those questions. However, if, you've, if you're someone who's been told that your eggs are terrible, it might actually help to find out that your embryos actually were low mosaic because it might actually change your path and you might pivot and go back to doing more IVF cycles than consider donor egg. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, there's so many different branching points in all of this and the more information you have, the more empowered you can be to make decisions that are gonna lead to the best outcome for you. Exactly. I feel like we should have like a slogan, before you discard, know the truth about your abnormal embryos. And to know the truth, you have to get the official reports and you have to talk to an expert in this field. You can't just take that call and then say, okay, I signed that discard consent, not to be overly dramatic about this, but I have now saved countless embryos from being discarded that have turned into beautiful, healthy babies and pregnancies. And I'm not afraid to say that I have transferred abnormal embryos. I've transferred segmental embryos. I've transferred low mosaic embryos that have turned into successful pregnancies and healthy live births. So I hope that people will listen in and really take what we're saying into consideration and use your genetic testing report as a way to prioritize which embryo transfer first, not discard. And it's just really important for you to know what your clinic's transfer policy is and their reporting policy, because some people just will refuse to be transparent about it. And I hope that's going to change. And some people will say that they will not transfer your abnormal embryos. So you have to think about what you're going to do if that's a situation that you're in and you want an option to transfer an abnormal embryo. Yeah. And if you're feeling overwhelmed by confronting your clinic and getting all of that information, again, that's where someone like myself can be a good advocate for you. We're happy to do that like work for you and give you that support. So Megan, I'm going to just throw this out there. Why even test then? It's a great question. I think that a lot of people think that, especially when they get frustrated with their PGT results and they say, if an abnormal embryo is becoming a healthy baby, why would I bother? And it's really what you said. This is a test to prioritize embryos for transfer. It is not black and white, like I think a lot of people think it is. This is a really great way to prioritize your embryos for transfer. And especially in people who are going to make a high number of truly aneuploid embryos, people who are egg providers of older ages, we are a lot more confident in the accuracy of those results a lot of the time. And it can be a way for us to know which embryos have a chance, give those ones the priority until you're at the end and we're figuring out what the last options are. But it can be a way to speed up moving to the next IVF cycle if there's only one normal embryo, it wasn't successful, and you have six abnormal embryos left, you're going to waste a lot of time transferring those embryos, which probably won't be successful 
So we can get you to your next IVF cycle, get another euploid, have a higher chance. But there are so many factors in all of that. There's really not just cookie cutter. And that's really why I think both you and I, Amy, really appreciate meeting with a patient, seeing where they're at, what are all the individual circumstances that you're meeting, because PGTA isn't right for everybody, but it can be helpful for a lot of people. And so I especially like talking to people before they do PGTA to see if it's right for them, but a lot of the time we're talking afterwards as well. And whatever point you're at, the discussion can be helpful and worthwhile. I couldn't have said it better myself. Actually, you said it way better than I could ever. <laughs> I agree. Thank you, Megan. And I know you've talked to so many of my patients and touched their lives in really important ways. So thank you for the work that you're doing. And thank you for being out there on social media talking about this. It's scary. I think people don't necessarily like the complication and the discomfort that might come from potentially transferring an abnormal embryo. And I think it's important to recognize that these aren't comfortable conversations to talk about. When you see a report that says abnormal and you have someone that says you can consider transferring it, it there's a disconnect and I totally get it and I appreciate it. So careful counseling with someone like you, with your doctor, with a perinatologist, for example, all very important depending on what your goals are. Absolutely. Thank you, Megan. Thank you for having me, Amy. 